So cleaning the entire cylinder head is very much important, especially to remove all the dirts and flags that uh, stuck along the passages or galleries of the cylinder head. So this is the cylinder of the Perkins 1103A diesel engine. So these are the holes and take an X house to holes. So I'm gonna point in right here. This is the air intake passage. Air intake entrance. Uh, this is connected uh, with a pipe going to the turbo. The intake valve set is bigger than the X house valve set. And right here at the center is the valve guide. The same valve guide and the X house gas passage. This is the X house outlet. the bolt passage, oil and uh, coolant passages, these are the holes for the passages right here as you can see. And small holes for the towel. On the other side these are the engine and coolant temperature sensors. And these are the exhaust and intake valves. So for the compression stroke, both intake and exhaust are closed. For intake stroke, intake valve is open, just like that. And for the exhaust stroke, exhaust valve is open. So only two major functions of these valves, no other than open and closed. I'm gonna start grinding the six valves using a grinding coarse compound and put some oil on the valves to make sure that the valves and valve sets are perfectly fitted. using a portable hand drill in order to make works faster and easier than using the manual type of grinding hand grinding it will take time this is the result when we already grind the valve just like this by the use of grinding compound. It's not yet grind. So now it's all finished grinding and ready for the assembling of all components. And these are the components of the cylinder head. And before we're going to put or install the valves, so we have to put some lubrications, grease or an oil, in order to lubricate both valve stem and valve guides and to avoid also some fractions. So both valves now are partially fit and we have to lubricate first the top of the valves and carefully align the valve seal to the top and we have to carefully hit the seal downward so just like that this is the valve spring the large portion will be seated and the smaller portion of the valve spring will be facing on the top. This is the valve spring retainer. I am using a fabricated valve spring compressor. I'm still comfortable using this kind of fabricated valve spring compressor. 
and we have to make sure that valve locks are securely fitted. So this is now how it looks like this, the valve locks right here, the valve lock canal as you can see. So the valve locks are embracing the valve stem just like that. So just continue the process of assembling the components of the cylinder head. And the last is try to hit both intake and exhaust valve to make sure that all of these are totally secured and fitted. Time to install the cylinder head and we have to put some lubrication of the cylinder head gasket before we're going to set the head. Put the head gasket on the cylinder back. Make sure that the dowels are perfectly aligned gasket must be placed properly and install the cylinder head carefully and make sure that the dowels are both aligned According to the engine's manual, this is the torque given for the cylinder head. So just follow the steps on how to torque the cylinder head. The torque has already done and it's time to install the push rods on the top of the valve lifters. So at the bottom as you can see those are the valve lifters. Next to install is the rocker arm shaft and we need to blow an air first on the tiny oil galleries. These are the tiny oil galleries of the shaft. And there are some marks, so the marks will be facing on the top if we are going to install the rocker arm shaft.
these are the preheating plugs. These are the preheating plugs, and it helps to ignite directly the air and fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please help me to like and subscribe my YouTube channel. And see you on my next video. Have a nice day and take care.